Hello and welcome, long time no see, and I'm back with another Spark AR tutorial video. In this video we'll be looking at, well we'll be looking back at a previous effect where we made a split screen using render passes and we'll be returning to it and kind of expanding on it a little bit. So in this video we we're going to be looking at how to create uh, this effect where when we tap on the screen we have this animation that transitions and we can kind of get control of a kind of split screen transition between one render pass and another. And we'll also be using the shader render pass feature that was introduced at the beginning of the year slash end of last year to look at how we can create more complex effects. So please bear with this video, there'll be some steps that we'll be, I will kind of jump ahead of a little bit. Uh, this is mainly to do with my computer speed and when it comes to rendering out our compositions and you'll kind of see why in a bit. So without further ado I'm going to break this down and kind of show you how this was achieved from scratch. Okay, so I'm going to start off by starting a new project and I'm just going to go with the face tracking template and make this full screen. And now I'm going to basically follow largely the same steps I followed for the split screen render pass uh, at the end of last year slash early this year. So again, if you haven't seen that, the link will be in the description, but I'll kind of go over it quickly in this video anyway. And we're just going to add a null object call this null object left. I'm going to drag my face tracker onto my left object so my null object should have my face tracker attached to it and then I'm going to right click on my face tracker and just add a plane and just create a new material and I'm just going to colour this material let's say green. I'm now going to duplicate my null object, which will also duplicate everything that's contained within it. And on this duplicate, I'm just going to call this one right, like so. So now we should have our left and right. And on this second plane, I'm just going to create another new material and just colour this material blue or something else, basically. I'm going to open up my patch editor just to get that ready. And I'm going to now go over to my device, go to my render output and create and use the default pipeline create just to make life a bit easier. So this should automatically add in most of the things we will need. I'm going to drag my device over there just for a second. Like so. And I'm going to just remove my device object from the scene because I don't need that. And then I'm going to drag my left null object into my patch editor and use this as my scene object. Now at the moment this will appear black, that's normal, that's fine. And then I'm going to drag from my scene render pass to a mix and hook this up and then from my mix I'm going to drag to a shader render pass and you should get this little preview window where you can sort of see the shader in action. Drag this to a blend and I am looking at a piece of paper so you might hear rustling. Then drag this to a mix because I'm going to be uh, adding in some animation later. So again, this looks a little bit complicated at the moment and some of this you could actually condense and reduce. You don't necessarily need all of this. But this is just a sort of one way I found of doing it. Like I said, there's many ways of doing a lot of things. It's just, again, working out the kind of way you tackle it. And then I'm going to copy my scene render pass, so Control c Control v to copy it. Drag my camera texture RGB to the background of my scene render pass and do the same again. So I'm going to drag my right, click this to my scene object on my right, create a mix. And I'm using this mix to basically be our control for our alpha transparency. So this will be how we control what is shown, what is revealed, our animation sequence and I'll talk about how we need to create our animation sequence in a second. 
And then we're just going to add another shader, render pass, like so, to another blend. And then I'm going to mix this like so. So at the moment, everything should look uh, pretty much the same as, it, as you can see. So I'm just going to change my shader type to be flat. And what this will mean will do, we sh it should now mean in our preview windows, we should have one green square and one blue square appearing in the little shader render pass video. Now, the reason we can't see anything at the moment is because both of them are basically on top of each other. So if I was to just move one of these out of the way, just to sort of highlight the fact, you can see at the moment both of them are sort of on top of each other at the moment. But at the moment, uh, the top layer or sort or shade at the first shadow in the pass, which is our left one, is actually appearing on top of our second shader pass. That's because we've got no alpha control in there. There's nothing to sort of tell it what to show and what not to show. So it's showing everything. And because of the way that Spark works with the hierarchy, whatever is at the top of our scene hierarchy order is what appears first, essentially. Now we can set things like layer properties to be layer zero, layer one, which is a similar thing. Um, but we're going to just avoid that today and just concentrate on hierarchy as they are ordered within the scene as we would with Photoshop. So what we're going to need to do now is we're going to need to create some alpha masks. Now we're going to actually create these as animation sequences. And there are many ways of doing this. You could create a series of PNG images as long as you've got the transparency kept the RGB plus alpha enabled essentially. And we can create a series of sequences where we have a white rectangle or white shape that moves from one side to another. We can return back and forward if we want to as many times as you want. We want to try and keep the number of frames fairly limited because again we have a size limit and processing power can start to um, be your enemy at this case. Uh, but what I basically did was I used After Effects because I've got access to it. And I just created uh, two animation sequences. So one animation sequence, you can see we have this sort of electric purple glowing like a transition effect. And that's kind of inspired a little bit by WandaVision um, and that kind of thing, because that's, you know, quite popular at the time of making this video. And I've just got it going one from one side to the other and back again. And it's about 10 seconds long, uh, about 12 frames per second. Super simple, nothing overly fancy there. But what I did do is I then took the same animation. I added a threshold to make those electric bolts basically be white. Because if we remember, we've, we've talked about alpha masks before, whatever is white is what is shown essentially. And anything that's transparent is hidden or black is not doesn't appear basically. So what I did is I created a white rectangle in between. So underneath my two electric bolts, so I have this electric bolt, white electric bolt. So when it moves across, we have this alpha mask that moves one side to the other. And it's just basically following that path. I then added these to my render queue, export them as a PNG sequence with RGB plus alpha enabled. By default, it says RGB. So let me just quickly show you that. So file. Export, add to render queue, click on lossless, change this to be RGB plus alpha, and the format I chose was PNG sequence. It's important that you see a checkerboard here to know that it is basically transparent. I then click OK, choose where I want to save it, and then hit render, and there we go, it creates a series of PNG images. Like I said, there's many other ways of doing this. You could do this in Photoshop, you could do this in GIMP. There's lots of programs that will create these PNG animation sequences for you. So again, I'm not going to go for all those ways of doing it. Uh, once I've done that, I need to navigate to where they are saved. Now this is where my computer will kind of have some issues. It will potentially crash. So what I will do is I will actually skip ahead to me actually already importing them. But essentially, you would import them as you would any other file. So you'd go to File, Import, or Add Asset, Import from Computer, or drag and drop them into your Asset folder. Now, my version of Spark crashes whenever I use the Add Asset Import from my computer. 
hence why this will take a little bit longer for myself. So for you, this will be a matter of moments. Okay, so we've now imported our two animation sequences. One will be our mask and the other one is going to be just the lightning bolt transition. So again, kind of as I sort of showed you in After Effects, I created two files, both with RGB plus alpha. And I'm just going to need to create two animation sequences. I'm going to call one of them mask and I'm going to call the second animation sequence transition. And on the mask animation sequence, I'm going to choose my mask uh, animation sequence, which is basically the solid white on transparency. And the second animation sequence, I'm going to choose to be my second comp, which is the lightning bolt um, kind of to go on top of it. Because what I need to do is I need to have the alpha mask applied to one of my shader render passes. So in this case, it's going to be applied to my left or the topmost shader pass. And I then I want to add the animation of the lightning bolt to be on the very top at the very end on top of everything else. So we, the two will synchronize together hopefully and we'll get this effect where the mask and the kind of cover or lightning bolt, which is basically acting as our line, our divider, should go at the same speed and create the illusion of transition. So the way I'm going to do that is I've got both of my shader passes hooked up to my blender. So my blend patch then that goes into mix and then that goes into my screen output so your, sh output, your setup should look like you see on screen at the moment. I'm then going to drag my mask animation sequence into my patch editor and I'm going to hook up the A to the alpha on my mix and what we should see now in this little shader render pass preview is you should see the sort of animation on a loop here. You can also see it in action up in the kind of preview window but as you can see, we've got this very kind of harsh line where the kind of animation is kind of cutting off. And we actually want to mask that with our nice lightning bolt over the top. So the way we're going to do that is I'm going to go to my transition animation sequence. And I'm just going to hook the alpha up. And then I'm going to hook the RGBA up to the mix at the end like so. Now the two of them are out of sync at the moment, so I'm just going to hit restart and the two should be synchronized up. If they are not, it might be to do with the kind of speed or fret weights of animation sequences. So I'm just going to stop them both from looping for the time being. And I'm just going to add in a control to trigger all this off. So I'm going to go with a screen tap because again, it's the most simple kind of control to demonstrate within the editor. This could be any control method you want. I'm going to apply it to a switch. Hook that up to my pulse. Then link that to an animate patch. So an animation patch. So when it's, when it's turned on, it plays. When it's turned off, it will reverse. The progress will be linked to a transition which I'm going to change to be a number. And this is going to be the number of frames or images in my sequence I want it to play. So I'm going to change this to be around 30 because I want to play halfway of my se uh, sequence. I'm then going to select both of my animation sequences. Go over to where it says advanced and click on the little arrow next to current frame. So they should create R2 mask and transition current frame patches. Hook these up to my transition patch like so. And now when I activate simulate touch, it should play and transition like so. So every time I tap, it plays it forward. When I tap it again, it reverses it. You can see here that um, my animation sequences are slightly misaligned. That's because I'm missing a frame. So again, that's, I could go back in there, re-import my animation sequence and fix that. It's just I've got my alpha mask and my lightning bolt mask slightly misaligned. That's just my bad for not, I must have missed an image when I was uh, clicking and dragging. In fact, I can see up here I actually have. So I might actually fix that. So I'm just going to go away, fix that and come back and we'll see that actually being resolved. So just make sure that the number of frames are the same 
uh, for this to work, otherwise the two will become desynced and it won't actually look quite right. So I'm going to fix that and be back in a second. Okay, so I've now fixed it. So my both sequences are now lined up correctly. That's basically just because I was missing one frame on my image. So this is why it's important that we do make sure that we count the number of frames that we have in our sequences. So now when I click, we have a transition between the two shaded passes or the scene when, uh, when the passes essentially. And we can now basically control and, con and change the content on each one. So for example, on this white one, I could add a face mesh and give this our blue material. So now when we transition, we now have the plane object and the face mask or anything that's attached to that face tracker object now appearing. And likewise, when I click again, it shall transition back to my first scene when, uh, when the pass. So I know this is a little bit, seems a little bit complex and it might, there might be a better way of doing that. So if you can find a better way, please comment down below, share it. And again, we're trying to trouble problem solve and sort of think about this as much as we can. I'm trying to avoid using JavaScript. So there are ways of doing this that should be a lot more streamlined. This is just using pure patches. If I wanted it to sort of go forwards and backwards, I could use my entire sequence. So for example, I could go all the way through like that. So it goes forwards and then back on itself. But again, you can play about with values and everything to your heart's content until you get the effect that you're after. So hopefully this has been useful. Like I said, this is a follow up to a video that we did earlier in the year, which is down in the description down below. Remember to like, comment and subscribe because your support does benefit this channel greatly. And I will see you again soon. Goodbye.